Welcome in to the Wednesday edition of the Fun Astrology Podcast, September 13th, the middle of the week, and who is counting until Friday at 4.21 p.m. (laughs) Eastern Time. Oh my, you know, I so appreciate all of you who are living on your highest timelines because it shows up in every kind of way, and especially in your interactions. I had a listener question I was going to do from one of our long-standing, faithful, high-timeline-vibe listeners, but we'll get to that maybe tomorrow, because somebody put a comment on YouTube. It's not there anymore. I deleted it. Not for what was said, but for how it was said. And that's why I just wanted to thank all of you who comment and have left comments on the various podcast apps and on YouTube and You express yourself in the kind of theme that we do around here, which is high vibe living. And words are a vibration. In fact, they're one of our more powerful vibrations. And when people express themselves in the way that this person did, it just shows you that there is still a lot of work to do and a lot of opportunity for this podcast to make a difference. What they were referring to was the tragic earthquake that happened in Morocco on Friday. I was completely unaware of it. Not only is it Mercury retrograde season for two more days, but <laughs> we have the thing that I've been doing to get through these times is less and less exposure to the mainstream. I follow a few things on Twitter, mostly astrology and the stock market. Unfortunately, the political stuff bleeds through. If Elon wanted to do something good with that platform, he would give us the ability to selectively block certain words from showing up on our feed. Wouldn't that be amazing? I know, I know, you're already thinking about what words would you block. (laughs) We all would have our list, wouldn't we? And you know, really, that's the way it should be, actually, and I don't want to get off on a tangent, but think about it. If you could block all the stuff that you don't want to hear about on social media, then you almost could come back to it, because then my platform would be astrology in the stock market, and that would be what I'd want to see anyway, without all the other stuff. But lately, I've just found it better to be away from all that other stuff, so I just didn't know about it. Tragic 6.8 earthquake, thousands of people no longer with us, precious souls with families, pets, ambitions, dreams, loves, charts, and an amazing country that has been on my short list for a long time to visit, now experiencing this tragedy. So this took place local time at 11.11 p.m. in Morocco, Friday night, September 8th. And as we look at this chart, it's kind of like what we did with Burning Man. You look in here and you see a chart that the whole world experienced Friday, and even at this hour. And you ask, why this? Why here? Why now? My eyes fell directly to Jupiter and Uranus, conjunct in Taurus in the 12th house. And in the equal house system, Taurus was only about four degrees away from the first house cusp. So this was endings or secret sorrows, but in the later stages. As my eyes zoomed out, I saw Saturn sitting at the top of the chart just inside the 10th house cusp. In Aquarius, the sign ruled by Uranus of surprises. I don't think this is a correlation, but as I'm looking at this chart, Saturn is at two degrees, and as I opened up the news to look at this, the reports from probably the previous days, possibly outdated, 2,000 people so far dead. Here was an interesting one. The moon is in the second house, in Cancer, in its own sign. And it's in a trine aspect up to that Saturn that we just mentioned. And it's in a sextile to the Sun and Mercury in retrograde in the fourth house. Home, family. That one I don't understand because those are favorable aspects. Also with the Moon on Friday night, it was in a square to Mars. If the Moon is a portal to our emotions into this, certainly here is a group of people, a country, who lost things valuable to them. People, certainly, yes. Animals. Also, these amazing historic buildings. As I looked at that trine up to Saturn, it just seemed like this was magnified through that aspect. And certainly it touched the people, but not in a way that you would expect trines and sextiles to do. 
and I don't have an answer. If any of you have thoughts on that, please go to the funastrology.com website and leave an audio message. I got behind on those audio messages, and I apologize for that. I'm going to get them caught up. I just They got off my email thing. It's a long story, blah, blah, blah. But I am getting those caught up. But if you have an idea of why the emotion, the heart of this chart is in the area of our, you could say, possessions, but what's valuable to us, and it is square to Mars, Uranus has made its signature in this chart for sure, but why would that heart and soul of this moment be in these favorable aspects to not only the Sun, but also to Saturn? And see, like we did with the Burning Man chart, you take a look at the chart here, and if you were in Marrakesh on Friday night, and you were an astrologer, and you checked this before you went to bed, would you think that it was not safe to go to bed that night? No. I mean, there's no indication in here, to me, at least looking here at the transits, that there was some potential issue, an impending natural disaster. But then when it happens, you go back and look at the chart, you definitely can see the signatures. And obviously, these are beautiful people and live in an amazing part of the world and just a tragedy. So our hearts go out to them as well. Oh boy, even finishing the last couple of minutes of this episode took some rebooting and some stuff. And I do this like a machine. So Mercury, you can just get, <laughs> get direct ASAP. ASAP.